Hi everyone, my name is Sean Goodman. I'm a technical analyst in our UK office and what I'm going to be quickly running through today is the new Segway importer in Oasis Montage and I'll show you how you can link it into building some GMS's profile models. So the new importer is found in the 3D view menu uh, down at the bottom here, so it's import Segway. Now what we can do is we can select between two or 2D or 3D volumes and in time or depth as well. So here I have a 3D volume as just a Segway file and it's in time. Uh, what I can now do once I've selected my file is look at the text header. Um, it, you are entirely at the, the mercy of your seismic processes in terms of how well these are filled out. Um, and then you can look at the binary header file and the trace viewer file. And what we can do is we can select the byte order here, so big endian or little endian, the trace data format, and we can vary through the current traces to see what they look like. So I'm going to click next now. And again, here we come to the, the key field locations. Uh, we can define the bytes order. We can look at the samples per trace, interval, and first sample at. Again, we can select the trace data format, but all of this will be standardly um, filled out automatically. So once we get to the coordinate mapping section, we can define uh, the coordinate system here. Everything else will be automatically filled out again, including the inline and the crossline coordinate, X and Y coordinates. So I'm going to fill out the coordinate system here based on another grid that I have in this project. And that will automatically update the projection method and datum. So here I can select the source of the tie points. So that's either calculated from the trace headers or user supplied. I can define an output survey file and all of this is automatically populated again based on the input files. So here I can actually select to uh, dummy top and bottom traces uh, based on a certain value. So I'm going to select zero for this one. Uh, if we're bringing in a very large 3D volume, then we could subsample the volume so that we don't bring the whole thing in and, and spend a lot of time processing it. And the output files here, so we can generate a voxel. Uh, we can select certain slices to generate and we can generate a database as well. So here I've got the voxel ticked and I'm going to generate some slices. And these are pre-selected, so I've got some inlines, I can select some cross lines and some horizontal Z slices. And now I just press OK and that will run and load those in. So once that's loaded in, what that creates is the voxel within the menu here and a series of section grids in the grid menu. So IL, XL, and Z. So we've got inlines, cross lines, and Z slices within these grids. Um, and now what I can do is create a new 3D view so that I can have a look at all of these together. So I can just drag and drop my 3D voxel into the 3D view. And as you can see, the color tool for the voxel, even though it's seismic, is in the traditional gravity colors. So here I'm going to select color tool. And I'm going to move towards a seismic color bar. And then once I've done this, I'm going to save this as a transform. And this means that I'll be able to apply this to any other grids that I add into the 3D view. So now I'm going to add in some of those section grids that we imported. And I'll just go through and select the ones that I want from the menu here. And what I can go to is my color tool again. And I can actually browse for the transform file that I just previously created. And what this will now do is add that 
add all of those grids in and apply that same color tool to all of the grids at the same time without me having to manually go through and update each individual one. So now we have our seismic sections within the 3D view. We can also show our voxel. And what we can do is clip various, uh, various points. So we can clip in the Z orientation or from the top. We can see how that varies with depth. Uh, we can clip in the Y orientation and slide through and see how the structures vary. And again, in the X orientation. So what we can now do, if we want to make some GMSYS profile models from those section grids that we've just imported, we can go to Section Tools and save those section grids to a database. Now, in this input grid files, we can select numerous inlines and cross lines and save them to a single database here. So what this does is for each of those selected lines, we now have X, Y and elevation channels defined. So this makes it easy for us now to just go to GMS's profile and create a new time model. So we're going to import from the database line and we're going to, we've navigated to that, um, the demo lines one database and we're going to make uh, a model for inline 1702. So as you'll now see, it looks slightly different in GMSYS. Uh, this is a result of the 9.8 update. So we now have a view manager on the left-hand side. Um, what we can actually do is import numerous section grids um, in the depth and time windows. We can also bring, um, we have full, full map functionality, so we can bring things into the plan view window as well. So actually what I'm now going to do is add in a new grid, one of those section grids for this line. Uh, this is geo-referenced automatically, so I can select that grid file there. Um, I can remove the shadow, and this, this shows me the color that it's going to use as well. And I can select the target pane to be the time section. So now that's immediately brought that in, and I can then go and digitize any horizons along there and start to build out a model as well. What I can also do, if I've got a predetermined image um, which is geo-referenced within Oasis Montage, I can now display an image as well. So in this example, I've just drawn some lines over a PNG of inline 1702 and geo-referenced it. And now I can bring that into the time section as well. And that will overlay that here as well. And so I've got some uh, interpreted sections on there as well. And now I can switch between the two. So that's how you can build out models quite easily from the Segway importer. Um, I, so that's, that's all we're covering off today. So, so thanks a lot for watching and, and good luck.